Hi, this is Sasha Feiler, and you're watching TV Writer Podcast. So I want to tell you a little bit about our main sponsor for the episode. Script Anatomy is a screenwriting school that gets incredible results. In just four years, their students have won 58 fellowships, half of them at major studios. In 2020 alone, Script Anatomy won four out of 11 fellowships at CBS and three out of eight at Warner Brothers. Why? Because the instructors are all working writers with current credits. They teach a consistent tool-based program and they treat students like emerging professionals. To get your writing career started, go to scriptanatomy.com. My name is Gray Jones and I want to welcome you to the TV Writer Podcast, partner of Script Magazine, episode 123 for December 7th, 2021. Well, today I'm here with TV writer and performer, Sasha Feiler. How are you doing? Good, how are you, Gray? Doing great, thanks. I'm really fascinated to hear about your story. Um, I know it's really, really cool. Um, and also, you teach at Script Anatomy, and we're gonna hear about the, the course that you teach there in the latter half of the episode. But first, we're gonna start talking about you and how you ended up at this point. And I think you, you come from the farthest because you came from Siberia. Yes, it is not a joke. Um, the genesis of me is very interesting, I know, I know. Um, it is, um, I am one of those TV writers that doesn't struggle with my brand um, or with my origin story. I don't have to figure out what is the story that I have to tell every exec that I meet, because it's right there. I'm from Siberia, I really am. I grew up in the frozen tundra, with, in the coal mining town, and um, I'm the only one that came from Siberia, ended up in Los Angeles. Mm, very cool, and you famously landed in New York at 19 years old, I think, with oh, just a few yeah. dollars in your pocket? Yes, it was $40, which with inflation um, probably amounts to $48, I'm gonna just guess. Um, yeah, I was super broke, and my uncle, who lives in Maryland, shout out to my uncle, but he made me a student visa, which allowed me to come to America. But he lives in Maryland, and I arrived in New York, and so I was completely on my own. Mm, wow, and yet you ended up, um, with an MFA in, uh, was it? Television production. Television production, okay. So talk about uh, when you arrived, did you already know that you wanted to be a writer? Did you already know you wanted to work in entertainment or how did that manifest itself? Yeah, I always um, identified myself with like the big greats of filmmaking, like, <laughs> like Kubrick and uh, like basically just like famous white man who were the greatest, not always white, because Kurosawa is one of the greats too, but like, um, it, just because there's no women filmmakers at the time that would make such an impact on me, and I would always be like, well, I'm just like them. I want to be like Kubrick, like Kurosawa, like Francis Ford Coppola, and I knew somewhere there is where my heart was, and it's just, I just didn't know what my job would be. So when I arrived to New York, I just knew I wanted to be in storytelling, in film or TV, that's all I knew. And so you finished your MFA and you got a job at CNN. Yeah, to really fast forward through that, I ended up uh, getting my bachelor's in um, arts and TV and radio, and then immediately went into the MFA program in Brooklyn College. And after that, I immediately got hired to work as an editor producer at CNN New York. Looking on your IMDb, you have quite a few editing credits. Um, tell me about that time. Yeah, so I worked at CNN New York for a year and it was very interesting because for the first time I wasn't working as a street sign holder or exotic dancer. For the first time I actually had a real job where I had to go to the office every day and sit in front of a computer and edit things. And so that was very pleasing, but I knew it was not my thing. I knew the storytelling was calling in a very different shape and form. And I knew Los Angeles was somewhere there. So at the same time I met um, my now husband who was from Los Angeles. And so a year like after we met, we just decided that it's time to move in together. And so I moved to Los Angeles, which is where I really found myself. Hmm. And you started performing, did you do any performing in New York or was that when you arrived in LA? Yeah, in New York I was really too busy surviving for the most part and just trying to like survive every day because um, at some point I became a legal immigrant and I had to sort through that out. It's not really easy 
to come from Siberia and like make something of yourself, which probably many people can relate to. Um, and so I started making money when I came to Los Angeles, Los Angeles by um, working, I think I had one assistant editor job <laughs> where I had to learn Avid. I told myself I have to learn Avid like overnight. And so I did on that job, like two week long job, learn Avid, the editing software, which is the industry standard for television and film editing. And after that, I basically said, well, yeah, I am an editor, so hire me as an editor. And eventually I got that chance. And so then I worked in reality during the day. And by night, I became an improv student and immediately a performer. Mm, very, very cool. And you've done that for quite a while now. Yeah, I'd say uh, over a decade I've been doing improv. Got, um, yeah. Well, if we count apocalypse, then definitely over a decade. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And and you also have a lot of acting credits in in, sh in shows and features and things like that. Tell me about that that side of it. Yeah, I think once you're a performer, once you like to be in front of the camera, um, you kind of go for anything. I love the joy of being on stage with other improvisers, and I always tell my students, improv is one way where, without writing, you can sharpen your skills and dialogue and characters. Mm -hmm because you really have to do it on the spot and you do it with other people, which is very much like writer's room. So I feel like I was already kind of doing what the Beatles did, uh, working at strip clubs in Germany before they became the actual Beatles that they became. So, um, and at the same time, I uh, was getting occasional acting gigs, um, some commercials, and which was a lot of fun and I still enjoy doing that. Mm, very cool. And now, your um, your story also includes a time where you were a student at Script Anatomy. How did that come about? Yeah, I was taking um, a class at a different school that I shall not be named with a TV uh, writing teacher who shall not be named, who's a sweet person, but they um, really didn't have um, what Script Anatomy does have. Um, a certain way to teach your students. So a lot of it was done um, from that teacher's perspective is by taking the pages and saying these pages don't work and this is how the pages should go without actually having um, the students do the structure work first before getting to the page, which is insane to me now that I look at it. So I spent a lot of years like learning, not a lot of years, but a couple of years learning by osmosis and being in that class and really seeing how a working TV writer, which he, he was, was, you know, making scenes happen. But I never learned the structure and I was very frustrated about that. So even though I wrote maybe two samples in that class, I didn't feel like I have a strong sense of writing a TV pilot structure-wise. Mm -hmm. And then my friend Carlton Gillespie said, you have to take a class of script anatomy, that's all they're about, mm -hmm. which is what I did. And that changed my uh, skill set completely. From that course, uh, did you get uh, representation or what was the effect of, of, of writing um, that you were able to achieve through the course? Well, ironically, my very first sample that I wrote got me my staff writing job, the first staff writing job mm -hmm. at Robot Chicken. Um, and I think the reason it did, even though it doesn't have an insanely good structure, because it wasn't written as part of a script anatomy class, um, and, but for a job like Robot Chicken, you have to be very funny and have a lot of jokes and have strong characters and a very unique point of view, which is what I have, I think. And uh, I think that's what the script at least showed. Um, mm -hmm to the reader, which is how I got the job. But I think my writing improved significantly the moment I take first class with Kevin Townsley, um, which I think was uh, Structure Lab, or I, I can't remember exactly which class was first, but I know Kevin was my teacher in a couple of classes, and he is very strong with structure, and this is a lot of times I credit him and what I learned about structure, um, and now that I teach my students. And uh, after Robot Chicken, um, what came next? And after Robot Chicken, which was really fun experience, I really enjoyed it, I got uh, to be a fellow at an incubator for emergent writers called The Colony mm -hmm. at Abrams, also known as a three agency, with the execs who wanted to take a group of diverse, uh, not always ethnically diverse, but um, diverse, um, a lot of uh, diverse points of view. Mm -hmm writers and develop projects that have never been developed because they're just so unique. 
And this is where I wrote a script that um, immediately got the execs attached to it. And then we were shopping um, and, and, and we're still attached and we're still in development for, with that script. Uh, and um, I, I think it's one of my stronger samples for sure. Very, very cool. And, and have you done any other development since then? There are some projects in development, but there's not much uh, I can disclose right now. Uh huh. Very cool. We're going to take a quick break for our sponsors, and we're going to come back to talk about the course that you teach at Script Anatomy. AVGearGuide.com uses state-of-the-art technology to bring new life to old films and videos, like the Lost Betty White series Pet Set, which they recently restored for its 50th anniversary. They can apply the same technology to your documentary, film and video archive, and family videos. Visit AVGearGuide.com for details. DrivingFootage.com provides 360-degree driving plates for film and TV. Over 14,000 clips are available for locations all around Southern California, with more areas coming soon. A fully equipped camera car with height-adjustable rig is available for custom shoots. Visit DrivingFootage.com for details. Full disclosure, I do own both of these companies. By supporting them, you help me bring new in-person video interviews to you. And we're back. And, and specifically, you actually um, teach a number of different things at Script Anatomy now, um, including the TV Spec Lab, which is coming up in January. But um, I'd love to talk to you about Televisionary because um, we've had a number of Script Anatomy instructors and we always mention Televisionary, but nobody's ever actually discussed that course. So um, what is Televisionary all about? Yeah, Televisionary is the very brand, the very heart of Script Anatomy. And the reason is, is because it's the class that anybody can take, really. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to write a pilot. And what you get out of that class is you come in with an idea and you get out of that class in only five weeks, I believe, um, with a complete outline mm -hmm. that is an industry standard. For a lot of the Script Anatomy courses, Televisionary is a prerequisite. Um, so it is a very important course to take. And why? What, what are the things that you, you gain that will be applied in other courses. Televisionary is the best class to take for the script anatomy, even if you are a working writer, which um, many of my students are. Mm -hmm. The reason is because it introduces slash reintroduces the writers in the class to the a the vocabulary of what we're going to be using when we talk um, about different aspects of television writing. Mm -hmm. And also, it, what it really does, it introduces these tools that were developed by Tanya Bhattacharya, who founded Script Anatomy. And since then, it's been even more developed and improved. And these tools are the, uh, the very homework that the students will be filling out, brainstorming, working things out, building that story, the structure. And this is how you go from facing the demon of the white page, the blank page, to having the words on the paper that give you the confidence to complete, with my help, hopefully, um, the, the structure and the story that works for you. Mm, very, very cool. And so what kind of prep is needed before somebody takes this course? The beauty of television is that there is no prep. You just have to come in with an idea. And I will, in my prep, in those two weeks that we start to communicate before the class even starts, we will discuss and try to narrow down and shape that log line, that uh, the very show, the very hook of your show together, that it works for you and it works uh, from my perspective as what I know the industry standard is and what the executives and the managers and the agents look at and consider to be a good idea for a TV pilot. And, and how are the, the classes structured? Do, do people give notes to each other or, or how does that work? I really encourage my students to give notes to each other. I really get uh, on them for that. I, the, the way it works is that you send out the homework and then everybody reads it. And I, at, this, at this time, while I'm reading the homework, I encourage other students to give notes to each other, which they do, hopefully, and a lot of times they do. And then when the class, uh, the next class starts, the first half is the lecture, which is very, very, dense, um, informative, and fascinating lecture. I, I really think that. Um, it's connected to the tools, each tool attached to the specific week of televisionary. And then the second half of the class is we have a timer running, and each writer gets 
X amount of minutes to talk about the homework and my notes and also maybe the notes that came from other students. And a lot of times there, there is time to open the mic, open the floor for everybody here in class. And so by class two or three, the latest, everybody is acting like a real writer's room. Very, very cool. And, uh, and so tell me about some of the anecdotes from the class, people who, who have been able to get victories within their scripts and, and come to the end of it with, with ideas that went on to, to success. When people come to my class, they often feel overwhelmed because there's such a disparity in different levels of people who take this class. It could be a person who is staffed currently in a show on FX or a person who's never written a single word in their life um, from since high school. But it doesn't matter because what I tell everybody in class that I will hear, I will meet you where you are. I'm here to guide you and I will always want you to write what you want. I tell my students that it's important to think with your gut and not with your head when you write. A lot of times every writer can run into wanting to please somebody outside of them. This is probably what my manager thinks I need to do. This is what the agent thinks of an execs want. This is what the landscape of television currently is telling me I should be writing. And the answer is always no. You have to really pay attention to which point when you're writing or typing is you or start emotionally responding to it. Whether it's funny, uh, and comedy of course is something I really care about, or it's any other emotion that you connect it to. So when I keep nailing that notion over and over, multiple times a class, I notice that people open up and they start really giving, giving me and putting on the page their personal stories. And I always tell everybody, you will come out of this class with an outline. You like it or leave it. If you show up and if you do the work, it doesn't have to be perfect. You will come out with an outline. And I had people who just, just had hard time functioning in the beginning because it just was so overwhelming. Like you, you get these really difficult tools, but also so helpful, these tools that you have to sit down and work on them. And not the first draft, the second draft, the third draft is when it's really going to start speak uh, to you. But if they do the work, then eventually I just see how happy they are. And I'll give it this like love letters after each class with people telling me how grateful they are. And I think it's because I try to address everybody's work with compassion. And I have a lot of compassion for students and any writer's writing process because I know not all, it's not always easy. And so I think just this human connection and my willingness to work very hard at trying to formulate what is it the student wants to put on the page, the writer wants to put on the page, is what I think makes 95% like of my students to be a success story. And because what I really consider the most important success in any writer's story is having written something that they love. Mm. And the rest is really BS. And, and why don't you tease for me a little bit the TV spec lab that you're going to be teaching starting in January. You come in with an idea uh, for an existing show for spec lab. So now obviously the fellowship season is kind of starting. Everybody's starting to get excited about, okay, like I have to write a certain number of specs or at least one spec and maybe two original pilots. Hopefully you've been working on it throughout 2021. And this class is really focused on the specs, meaning... So like a spec episode yeah, of an existing show. Of an show. existing I show. See, I see. Because I think one of the most important things that a, a writer should remember, and I try to remind my students, students, is that they have to watch television. They have to know, even if it's a, just a pilot of a show they would never watch, they should be aware of it. So the more pilots they watch, the more they're aware of what's out there. And in that, in the same sort of, in, this, in, the, in connection to that, you um, pick a show that speaks to you, that you really love, and that also maybe you can relate to on some level in connection to your brand and who you are, where you come as, as a human being. And this is the spec we're gonna write, and hopefully you will submit to fellowships and you'll feel great about it. So this is the really good class just to come in with an idea. I will help you to narrow down this idea into something that's thematically loud, which is what 
a really strong fellowship spec should be something thematically strong and unique that also relates to the writer behind it and that speak uh, that spec i believe will help you stand out in the thousands of submissions and so what kind of homework should somebody do before that class to prepare for that class they should decide they should definitely look through the list of probably is available already pilots for all the four or five major fellowships that um for the shows that are on the approved list on their, on their approved list so once they look at one or two and they become very familiar with where is the story currently um and maybe watch some so just yeah watch everything watch over and over get really familiar if this is succession watch it over and over get to know which character speaks to you why do you emotionally feel connected to kendall roy um and and then and then come in with an idea or two and probably in the this is when we start talking about the idea is in our pre-class homework mm -hmm. well let's see what is the log line of this episode they're going to write and when exactly does this episode come in the season and a lot of times it should be like a self-sufficient episode mm -hmm. very very cool what what are the most common mistakes that you see writers making i mentioned that it has to do the main mistake i think with thinking with your head too much being a writer, we are people who spend a lot of time in our heads, but there's something else to be said for connecting to something else. And um, I have some tricks for that that, um, that will open your mind up and, and have you more being connecting to who you are as a human being. And so if you're feeling giddy, if you are noticing, like for me, I know I'm writing something great, uh, at least for me, maybe not for everybody, when I get up and I start pacing. So the moment I hit something on the page that I'm like, this is actually works, in fact, instead of writing it further, I get up and I just leave the computer and I start pacing somewhere like in the kitchen or like unrelated area. And then I'm like, I know this is gonna work. Mm -hmm. And then I come back and I, and I sit with it and I work on it some more. So it's really knowing yourself and connecting in a very Buddhist way, like connecting to um, who you are and then, and then also walking in the mist um, and therefore getting wet. I like this proverb, uh, if you walk in the mist, you will get wet. So the more you spend time with other writers, the more TV you watch, the more scripts you read, the more you will just organically know what's right and what's wrong. And a lot of people just think that from them, uh, not a lot of people, but some people think that they can tell what the audience needs, what the execs want to read, and the answer is they never, they never really do know what they want to read until we tell them what they want to read because we gave them something that they've never read before. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually amazed all the time when I see people breaking, wanting to break into the industry and they've never read a script or they haven't read many scripts. It's almost like wanting to be a novelist without having read books. Yeah, I don't think it's a sustainable way to be a TV writer is not watch TV. I know it's hard though when you are like say a comedy writer myself, it's hard to push yourself to watch like all the comedy because you become so picky about what comedy you love. But you still have to know what the pilot is of Ted Lasso even if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But like with drama, I'm like I'll watch it all because I have no stakes. Even still my brain automatically just goes like midpoint escalation, low point, climax, resolution, that never stops. Very, very cool. Well, we're, we're gonna start to wrap things up, but is there anything else that you wanted to mention about the courses that you teach um, that we haven't covered? Um, no, check out Script Anatomy, check out every uh, teacher, because yeah, the, we give the same tools, but I think it's like with anybody, find a teacher that you love, don't get too teacher attached, the same, the same in, like, in yoga, don't get like too teacher attached. But if you find a teacher that speaks to you, at least for the duration of particular Mm, spec or pilot you're writing, stick with that teacher. You know, go from take the class, take televisionary, and then maybe when you come out with the outline, see if that person is still teaching draft intensive, um, so you can at least have that journey with them because they have been with you from the beginning. Because a lot of writing is finding out what doesn't work on the page and then putting that away, and then eventually by the method of like, um, you know, elimination, finding what does work. So stick with the person that can help you guide through this. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. And uh, 
I should mention, as I've mentioned a couple of times on the podcast, that these classes book, um, they get filled up very early. And so you want to make sure to book ahead and constantly be checking the class schedule to make sure uh, sometimes there are new classes that open up, new opportunities open up, get on them right away. And, the, and to be clear, the, the one that is coming up imminently um, uh, from when this podcast is released is the TV Spec Lab. But there are other courses that you teach as well. So make sure to watch for Sasha. Actually, there's a, a, a neat uh, filter that you can do on the class schedule. You can filter by instructor and it'll tell you all the, the classes that that instructor is doing. So that's, that's actually very helpful as well. Uh, but you're on Instagram, shut up, I love it one. Yeah, so I also, uh, among other things that I do, um, multi hyphenate, of course, uh -huh. but I co host um, a podcast called Shut Up, I Love It with my friend Joe Cabello, another writer, also a writer. And it's a comedy, not always comedy, but usually comedy podcast with TV writers, actors, performers about things or. Um, movies or TV shows that they are underrated in their mind, underappreciated, hated, forgotten, and they bring it up to the surface and share their love for it. So that's why my Instagram is shut up, at shut up, I love it one, and the same thing on Twitter. So please follow me. I usually follow people back. Very, very cool. And you can find the podcast on Any iTunes. Platform and platform across every single platform. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, make sure to check it out. Subscribe to Sasha's podcast and check out her courses at Script Anatomy. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time today to share about your life and the courses that you teach there. Thanks for having me, Greg. Congrats on your ongoing podcast, and I hope to see you in class. Thanks so much. Please follow me on Twitter for the latest updates. At Gray Jones is my handle. Make sure to bookmark tvwriterpodcast.com and scriptmag.com. You can find the video version of this podcast at iTunes, Podbean, and on YouTube. Make sure you do subscribe to all these places. Audio only, you can find us at iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, or Pandora. And on Instagram, you can follow at TV Writer Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.